If you want to improve your life, you're going to want to watch this video because I can tell you exactly how you can achieve that. And we are live. Welcome back, Empowering Fam. How are you doing today? If you're new here, my name is Michaela Rosabeth. And I'm on a mission to help others help themselves by sharing how I helped myself. Today is season one, episode 22, how to improve your life from someone who hated life. I am so excited to talk about this. And as every episode on Rosabeth Moon motivation, I encourage you to take what works for you and leave what doesn't. If it doesn't work for you, it's not meant for you. That's why at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you multiple different things that not only worked for me, but might work for you too, including stuff that didn't work for me, but I know works for others because my entire channel is helping you find what works for you. Also, if you're into self-improvement resources that are completely free or natural skincare or even free worksheets. The website is going to be right up here. The moon has three O's in it, just like the podcast. The key points of this video, there are three. Number one is my backstory about why I needed self-improvement and why my story is going to relate to why you might want to self-improve. Two, self-improvement is all about you, right? And then three practices that you can integrate into your life that you can improve. Now, let's jump right into episode 22. In season one, episode three, we're gonna jump back quite a bit, right? In episode three, we talked about how in high school I was the goth kid with red hair down to here, and I really didn't get messed with. Nobody ever messed with me. And I wanted to share this story with you on this particular episode because it's really important, right? Why did no one mess with me? Well, in 2016, I was a sophomore in high school and my mama had tragically passed away. And she was not only my light, she was also what kept encouraging me to stay kind, to not become the uh, bully the bully mentality that I soon did after she passed away. Once I lost her, I lost all happiness in life. And this led to me not caring at all about any repercussions of any of my actions. It did not matter to me what happened because now that my happiness is gone, I hate my life. Nothing can compete. I will never be the same again, right? That was the mentality in my head. So I took this out on everyone. If I saw somebody getting picked on in high school, I would bully the bully. I would stand up for them. I did not care. I hated them. I hated my mom. She, I love her. She tried her absolute best, but I hated her. I hated my relationship that I was in because it reminded me of all the anger that I felt as a kid. I hated everybody around me because of everything happening. I hated my friends because they talked about me behind my back, which, you know, that's a lesson. If someone talks about you behind your back, they're not your friend. Cut them out, right? I hated everything. And then that's when the disorders started emerging. I decided to go get therapy because I hated life to the point that I was getting numb and didn't care about the consequences. I had already set up my life for success and right now I didn't care. So my life was starting to fall apart. And I got diagnosed with PTSD and major depressive disorder. And so the result of all of this was that I actually had decided that I don't want to hate life. Is this all that life really is? Is it? Is, is life only about hatred and being bullied but bullying the bully is it really all about hey is it all about just not enjoying this life i don't think so i was getting so sick and tired of wasting life 
I decided that I'm not going to waste my life anymore. I'm not going to stay in this hatred anymore just because I've had unfortunate childhood trauma and have had an unfortunate passing of the best thing in my life from that time. I can't. I refuse. I refuse to let that stop me because I'm not wasting my life. I'm not living in hatred. And so I decided to self-improve. I watched all of these self-help gurus online and I read all the self-help books. I dove into the scientific community of physics and quantum physics and the brain and psychology, figuring out why like I hated life and why this was happening. And then I also dove into the spiritual side. I dove deep into the metaphysical and chakras and meditation and energy and did everything that I could to help myself feel better because all I felt was hatred. And what I learned was that a lot of the teachings simply say that it's their way or the highway. And that's not correct. That's not correct at all. All that does is actually perpetuate disorders. If somebody tells you that you're doing something that is wrong, the brain is going to start craving that thing that you're saying is wrong because it's craving the restriction. We talked about this in the last episode. I started forming, I started forming a hatred for self-help because all I wanted to do in my life was feel better. And all that I was receiving was people telling me that what I had been doing and learning for at that point, six years was incorrect. And so it was just fueling this circle of hate. And that's when I learned the second point of this video, which is self-improvement is about you and what works for you. We've talked about this before in season one, episode 15, why self-help is important to do your way. And this is going to apply here too, because when I learned that I can actually integrate only a specific piece of self-help that works for me instead of everything else, that's when my life began to improve. That's when I realized that I don't have to hate my life. I don't have to hate self-help. I don't have to hate this practice. I don't have to hate it. If there's something in it that I like, I can just take it. I can just take this little like, like pot for me and then kick everything else to the curb. And I know this is a very non-traditional way of helping yourself improve because it's not super easy, right? It's not easy formulating a new self-help path that works for you that doesn't work for others when what's worked for others has been repeated over and over again. But just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it works for you. So if you've tried and tried and tried to improve your life and haven't found anything that works for you, I'm right there with you. I also couldn't find anything. So I began taking bits and pieces of the lessons that I've learned and started actually trying new things. And this leads to the third point of the video, what worked for me and some practices that might work for you too. So I throw in science, we know this science, I love it. <laughs> into it and I found a few things that really helped me. Five things in particular that helped me improve my life absolutely the most. Number one was journaling. Neuroscientists found that handwriting and journaling establishes new neural networks and connections in your brain. And simply put, all that means is when you're journaling about improving your life and what you want to improve and how you feel when you improve it, your brain actually starts to rewrite itself and its connections. In turn, what that does is it starts looking for ways to improve your life. I have a worksheet on the article down below in the description on rosabethmoon.com where there's a free worksheet just about this down in the description below. It's completely free on my website, so check it out if you love to learn by handwriting just like I do. But this entire video is about improving your life for you. If journaling doesn't work, that's fine. The second thing that worked for me was mobility exercises. There's so many 
There's so many studies about why exercise helps you. And one of the studies that is in the description in the work cited is that it actually eases depression and anxiety. And I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder and an anxiety disorder all mixed in together. And what I found that worked best for me was mobility exercises. They are super, super easy and they make my body feel amazing. I highly suggest if you hate cardio and you hate strength training, try mobility. It's gonna be immensely easier. It's all about finding what works for you. The third thing that I found was finding my passion, right? There's an episode in here in my a podcast collection all about finding your passion and finding my passion and what I love in my life and actually doing the things that I like doing helped me improve my life because I no longer hated my job and my career because this is my career. Being with you, my empowering fam, like it's so great. It fuels me helping people. And so find your passion. If you want more on that, got another video on that and I'll link that into the chapter at the end of the video. Fourth thing that worked for me was setting boundaries. Setting boundaries in my life was very important because the things that I hated, I set a restriction with. I set that boundary. You know, I hated my relationships because it reminded me of my childhood trauma. So I set that boundary that you're not going to. No, no, no. We're not being triggered, especially in this relationship. When the relationship's supposed to be happy and healthy and loving and kind, we're not doing that. Right? So set your boundaries. And then the last thing that helped me was acupuncture. This is more of a metaphysical one that I went for instead of the super physical. I went because part of my symptom of major depressive disorder was that I was disassociated. And my form of disassociation was essentially my energy would float around my body. And so in the means of I couldn't really hear properly, I couldn't smell, I couldn't feel my body. And then I was on the table the first time I did acupuncture and they needled my chest up here and up here and I had needles in my hands and I genuinely felt my energy pop into my body and I could hear the birds outside for the first time. I could actually feel my heartbeat inside my body for the first time and it was amazing. So those are the five that worked for me. But I do have 15 other practices that might work for you in the article. I'm going to read them really fast here and put a little text of them that you can try. If you want to know more, of course, check out rosabethmoon.com. And that's where all of the other self-improvement practices might work for you. I'm going to read them fast. Are we ready? One, Reiki. Two, chakra healing. Three, sound healing. Four, meditation. Five, EFT tapping. Six, TRE exercises. Seven, earthing. Eight, ice, ice baths. <laughs> Nine, going outside. Ten, breath work. Eleven, five senses meditations. Twelve, aromatherapy. Thirteen, go for a run or walk or jog. 14, tremor therapy, and 15, watch some of your favorite shows. Something that just fuels your inside. I just want to leave this note. If you made it this far, I'm so immensely grateful for you. I am genuinely so grateful for you to be here. Not only necessarily for me, but because you get to decide what you want in your life. You get to decide how to improve your life. And that's so exciting. I want to know in the comments, what are you wanting to improve? Let me know. Right now, I'm improving Moon Magic Botanicals. We're in a new restructure. We're in new testings. And we're in a testing market right now. So stay tuned for that. And remember, you have the power of choice. You can choose to improve your life. You can choose to get out of a cycle that you don't like. You can choose to stop wasting your life. Just like I have. I hope that you have an amazing day. I will see you in a week. In the meantime, please, please, please hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, and please check out the podcast playlists. I have them all in order. I have a how to heal basics, and I also have the affirmation episodes. I'll see you in a week.
Have a good one, okay?